Hey, what's going on you guys? It is Michelle and I'm back at you with a new video today. I went ahead and threw together a kind of like a meal prep video, kind of what I normally do. I don't really box up my meals and package them up just because I'm at home, a stay at home mom. And I just like to have things ready and available so I can just heat it up and or just throw something together really quick having prepped and washed vegetables and that sort of thing. So if you wanna see how I do my meal prep, then go ahead and keep on watching. Hey guys, I am so excited to be sharing this recipe with you. I have been obsessed with roasted chicken thighs lately and I have finally found a really good way to make them and I wanna share. Yeah, she tried to grab the knife, that was not good. Anyways, so I go ahead and put all in a big bowl and add all my seasonings. Lately, I have been taking my pepper, my onion powder, my garlic powder, my paprika, and my pink salt and I have been putting it all in a big huge jar and making the blend. That way I could just kind of put a whole bunch of that in the bowl instead of doing it all individually like I am showing you right now. But anyways, you just put it all in the bowl and you will massage the chicken really, really, really well. You can see I, I get down, I took out a whole bunch of footage because I was massaging these babies pretty good. You wanna lift the skin, get underneath the skin, rub them together however you can to get the whole entire chicken coated completely all around, get it in the nooks and crannies because it is way better that way. And then I will take the chicken and I will line it on the sheet pan. And I like to lay the skin flat, as flat as possible because it makes it really nice and crispy. I don't like to have them folded and flopped underneath. I like them to be pretty laid out. Call me anal, retentive, whatever you wanna, but this is the way I like to do it. It makes the skin really nice and crispy and it cooks evenly this way. So yeah, 325 degrees for an hour and 45 minutes or two hours, whatever you fancy. And now we're gonna do some bacon preppage. I just recently started doing it this way and I love it. You could also cook your bacon in strips and cook it um, as bacon bits this way like I'm showing you guys right now. But I basically just keep it in the freezer a little bit and then that way it's nice and easy to cut. And I will chop the hell out of it and toss it all in a pan like you see and let it render down for quite a bit while I work on other things. I always love to prep my veggies as soon as I get them or as soon as I have time. So I will do my green onions and then I will put them in a container all chopped, cleaned and ready to go. That way I can add them to salads, I can add them to stir fries, top it off on something. Green onion is really good um, because it's a lot lower in carbs. Oh yeah, bacon, food porn shot right here. So you just want to give it a stir every now and then. Back to the veggies. So I'm gonna do some spiralizing of my zucchinis. I have two more zucchinis that are in the refrigerator, just in case I wanna do something else with them. But for these four, I am just spiralizing them and keeping them in a container so I just can grab them and make something with them. Back to the green onions now, they dried a little bit. So give those a really good chop. I like to keep a little bit of paper towel in the very bottom of my jar, that way just in case there's any moisture, the paper towel will soak it up and they don't get all gross and they don't go bad and get moldy or you know how they get all black and slimy. You don't want that, so that helps a lot. Oh yeah, right here, my SD card failed on me, so I had to do some of this video with my phone. But I hope you guys don't mind I'm getting back to the action. I already cleaned my cauliflower and rinsed it. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this broccoli flower. And I think that is what it is actually called. It's basically a green cauliflower. So all I like to do is take most of the core out and all of the leaves, pop the whole thing in there to like rinse it off. But back to the bacon, it is totally crispy and done. And same thing here, I am putting some paper towel in the bottom of my mason jar and I use mason jars for everything. I love them so much. And I'm just gonna put my bacon in here so that the way the grease can absorb into the bottom of the paper towel. Put a little strainer and I save my bacon grease because you wanna cook with that, you guys. Get that get that fat in. That's gonna that's gonna be your calories for the most part, except for protein. 
So strain out the last bit of bits and gotta save those. Put them in there. There you go. So my cauliflower and broccoli flour all dry, ready to be cooked, mashed, whatever. And yeah, so this is how I usually do my prep. Keep things in big containers. But I'm gonna show you how I prep my jalapeno poppers. So excited about these. But yeah, there's the bacon grease. Yeah, okay, now here we go, jalapeno poppers. This is one of my favorite ways to make jalapeno poppers. All you do is slice the jalapenos in half and you wanna take out all the seeds, like you see here. And I would suggest keeping the little ends on because it's nice that you can hold on to those when you eat them. I screwed up and cut the end off of one of them, but you get the point. So you're gonna wanna clean the insides out and take, I don't know, a couple ounces of cream cheese, however much you decide what you wanna do, however full you want your jalapeno poppers. But I like to do it this way. You take your cream cheese, take a little bit of green onion and the crispy bacon bits. You gotta pour those in there. And then you're just going to mash all those ingredients up, just those three, and smash that all together. And you're just gonna fill the jalapeno poppers with that little mixture. And if you want, you can put a little bit of cheddar cheese on top before you bake them. I would bake them at about 375, 400 degrees Fahrenheit until they're nice and soft. Or how, if you like a little bit of bite, cook them a little less. Or you can broil them if you like your jalapenos crunchy, however you want to do it. That's up to you. But maybe about 15 minutes on 375 degrees should be okay. But I store them this way and cook as needed. You can also use a toaster oven. And the chicken is done. This is about an hour and 45 minutes. When I do my chicken prep, I like to do an hour and 45 minutes. That way I can keep them in the container like this. And then when I'm ready to reheat, I reheat in the oven for about 20 minutes on 375 and it'll crisp the skin up even more. I'll take my zoodles out and I will do some prep with that. I'll just throw them in a pan and cook those and some bacon grease, throw some bacon bits in there, maybe some green onion. But yeah, this is how I do my prep. This is just a few things and I hope it helps you guys out. I totally love making this video, but here's the meal I had that night. Just some zoodles with butter and then the next day I had some chicken breast with zoodles, lemon, salt and pepper and butter. And then here is zoodles, some bacon, some chicken thigh all sauteed up with some green onion and this is green cauliflower mash with some meat and mushrooms and this is some abraca flour um, potato salad mix with a chicken thigh. Thanks for watching this video, you guys. I hope you liked it. Please give me a thumbs up if you did, and go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed already, if you're interested in more keto-like videos. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.